All right, so next day, since it's only me, steep hill. Don't trust that. Don't feel like sending this thing into the wall. I got the bridle out and I got the winch. And what I'm gonna do is get the winch tight. Now we're gonna have the winch tight. I'm gonna get that off. And then hopefully these boards decide to cooperate the way that I need them to. I have more over on the other side. So I'm gonna get that strap off and uh, get this thing down. Well, you can tell I wasn't the one who hooked this up. I'm like, gee, I wonder why the winch stopped working and sparking. You cannot, that's a painted surface. This was the only way it was hitting the battery terminal, so. Well, it works great now. Just trying to avoid hitting the fenders is all. Kind of getting in back and forth. I just, I'm trying to be super careful with this. I know I don't have the right stuff to be doing this right now. Down the road, probably just go buy a rollback, to be honest, for stuff like this. But we'll see. Thing is, if it wasn't such a wide truck, like a standard dually would fit on here, even 17 inch, like that wouldn't. But like something like this would fit normally. And so the only reason I need the winch is because I need boards. If I had a second person, this would be nice. Watch, it's gonna fling that board. There we go. I just need to go turn the wheel, drop her down the rest of the way. We got plenty of room, and then I'm probably gonna drive it up into the other side, because this side's kind of blocked, but I'm drop it as far as I can into the bay. I wish none of that stuff was there, but it is what it is. So coming from owning multiple tow trucks, I do recommend when you're running these winches, don't be a dick. Take the winch, you have to keep pressure on it. Unfortunately, I can't show you. I'm just gonna do it because I can't do this too uh, one-handed. Um, unless you have like nylon or something, but these steel cables, you need to keep pressure on them when you're winding them up. Now on our tow trucks, this is how we did it. We did put the two right there, put it in a spot, keep some tension on it. That way it doesn't unravel. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna leave my bridle on the trailer just in case, in case anyone else needs to use it because just using a winch by itself is not the correct way to do this. Um, there is, if you know, I'm going to use this one for example. Every vehicle has these holes. You can see right there's a hole. Right there's a hole. They all have these holes. There's one. They're specifically made. They're specific ones. Um, they're specifically made to be able to put those bridles in there. And then they also have J hooks. For like solid axle stuff or if you're grabbing stuff from the rear this one doesn't count um but like if it has a solid axle like that so there you go i'm gonna pull this thing up front wheels will spin get the ramps out and then put those away real quick all right so we got it in you guys know how i love these two-wheel drive trucks because it makes them easy to work on up top but we're actually not doing any engine work to the truck right now we are actually other than the fuel filter I'm um, going to do the oil filter. I'm going to get these batteries mounted a little bit better. And other than that, we do need to go take it in for inspection. And it needs, we're doing a clutch, oil change, and a coolant flush. So we're going to be taking care of that. Uh, this clutch is pretty, pretty bad. Um, also, I'm going to get these put on. That's going to be the first thing. I'm going to put them on before I forget about them. But everything else, I want to get these mounted down. These aren't technically the yeah those are not the correct batteries but we'll get them mounted in there they're good batteries besides that then i gotta get this thing up in the air a little bit we're gonna pull the trans the clutch is gonna be the first thing i do and then i'll tackle the like the little bitty stuff uh here and there um because i brought that today so i don't have certain things that i need all right first order of business we got everything laid out so we got the oil filter fuel filters i am i'm just gonna do those first i'm gonna save the coolant for last so we'll get the oil change the fuel filter changed, and then we'll start pulling the transmission out today, which shouldn't be too big a deal. Uh, I'm not going to get this done today, but should have it done sometime this weekend, if not Monday. And then, yeah, this is a Valair unit, so everything looks pretty good. I've never had a clutch job come back, and I really like Valair. Josh is running one. It's a little aggressive, but 
really don't like South Bend. That's just, you know, my preference. A lot of guys like to bitch about that. But do not like the South Bend clutches. We got new hydraulics as well. This is a self-contained unit. There is no bleeding required. You literally just install it and call it a day. This end goes in the transmission, and then it'll snap as you push it in. Easiest part of the day. Just That, that actually takes like 10 minutes to do all that. So they're kind of, uh, kind of fun. But we've got the rear main seal. So let's uh, get everything installed. All right, going through, checking some oil. About to do the filter. Looks like the oil cooler would be leaking a little bit. You guys can see that. It's not a good sign. But yeah, you can see a big leak. I think the pan's leaking too. But it could just be the cooler. So I'll make a mental note of that. I'll let him know later. But I've got the oil drained now. I could do my stab it with a screwdriver trick, smack it with a hammer, get that loose, and then put the new filter on. I always tell you guys, if you can't get these filters for some reason or they're tight, just take a screwdriver. I'll show you here. Take a screwdriver, put it right on the edge, and then kind of give it a couple of taps with the mallet, and then you'll see this rusty filter comes right off. There are proper tools for it. Sometimes we don't have those proper tools available. I know a lot of you guys doing oil changes in your backyard probably don't have that specific tool available. But either a filter wrench or one of those, I have the one that comes up underneath and grabs it specifically for the uh, Mopar MO285. I don't have that on me right now. So that's what I had to do. I didn't bring the truck today, but it's fine. It gets a stuck filter down. Everybody and their brother has a million different ways to do these. I take a little bit of old oil, put it on the brim, and then hand tight. Now we can fill it up with oil. Oil change and fuel filter are done. All right, for those wondering how often we change our oils. So on a Cummins or any standard diesel that, you know, takes this much oil, we do them every 10,000. And I'm in one of the groups on Facebook, one of the, a bunch of the 2G ones and they're changing their oil every every 5,000 miles a lot of the guys in there and I'm telling you if you're changing your oil on any of these diesels even if you're towing constantly the only time you should consider doing it under 10,000 miles is if you are idling a lot or if you're doing city stop and go driving but if you're doing highway miles change your oil every 10,000 at least and get an oil analysis you might actually find that you can change your oil every 15 to 20,000 there's guys pushing it beyond that with good oil analysis so just keep that in mind anybody changing their oil before 10,000 miles y'all are just wasting a lot of money and before I get the comment, oh, over oil is cheaper than an overhaul. Guys, I'm telling you, if you change your oil every 10,000 miles, you're not going to have to, you're not going to blow a motor early. We've seen and had plenty of engines in here that change their oil every 10 to 15,000 miles that have half a million miles on them. So if you're worried about that, don't be. It has nothing to do with the oil. As long as you're using the good quality, like, I don't know, I like my Rotella T T6 or this guy's using Valvoline. Uh, mobile Delvac, you guys have said some good things about, but seriously, 10, 15,000 mile oil changes. Get an oil analysis after a 10K oil change, send that in, and you'll know if you can do it more or less. But if you're doing it without an oil analysis, just do every 10,000 miles to keep yourself safe. Don't be doing no 5,000 mile oil changes on these freaking things. So now that that's done, the coolant flush is the next thing. I'm not doing that right now. We're going to start taking off the drive shaft and getting the transmission dropped. We got the interior torn down right there. See, so I just need to get that shifter off, which I will do later because I don't have the tool here. But we're gonna start pulling the drive shaft. Which hopefully, they are 15 millimeter bolts like they're supposed to be. Well, they are 15s, but I know you guys can see that. So she's got a pinion leak. That's kind of looks like that's been leaking for a while. That's about how bad. Out with the old stock-ish looking unit. Like I said, these are all sealed, so you don't even have to bleed any of these. It's kind of nice. That's all done. Yeah, I didn't show you that either. The uh, master and slave cylinder, you can see bolts right there. And then down here. And then since we're replacing this connector, I just cut them and 
I'm gonna get that uh, replaced real quick. I need to grab the impact and a couple other things and then this thing's ready to come out. All right, so we got the shifter off. You guys will see these little weird, you guys ever wonder what these are? I never knew what they were years ago, but you want one of these. I'll show you, I got a whole, this whole kit here. So, that's what these are. That's a 12 millimeter. And they're kind of a pain. So next step, we're gonna drop the cross member, get all the bolts out and the trans. All right, so we got the trans out. I did just jack it up a little bit. This jack is not happy about it. So I'm gonna try to get this clutch out and in as quick as possible. Uh, I'll show you guys gotta know what's going on on the inside and the clutch, a bunch of 10 mil bolts. I'm gonna get all that and we'll go from there. You guys can see all the carbon whatnot. We're replacing all that inside there too. So I'm gonna try to get this done so we can remedy this. This jack is, it's a snap-on jack. It's on its way out. Um, it's gonna be upgrading soon, but we got that trusty one there. About to put a jack stand there, but I'm gonna grab my ratchet, get all that off real quick, and I'll show you what it looks like. We'll do a comparison. All right, give you a little update. We got the clutch out. I did have to cut one bolt because it was completely stripped. To the point of my Ugh. My socket set that I have, those little turbo sockets wouldn't even get it, but we got it. I think it was this one right here. Show you the clutch. You can see all the clutch dust. It's hard to breathe under there. Let's see, she's uh, pretty toast. Still had enough momentum in it to drive it on the flats, but I gotta get the flywheel down. And I gotta pull that little pivot ball out and get rid of the spacer underneath there. This thing's got some hot spots on it. So, not too bad. A lot of cracks too. Cracks and hot spots. So, she's done. Pardon my French, but some retard over at Dodge must have been screwing one of the German engineers when they did the G56 and whatnot. And decided that it would be best if we used torque converter bolts instead of an actual system. So, unfortunately, there's no way of getting them from the top, just kind of a pain. Had to take the wheel back off, take off the nice shiny chrome stuff, again. That was a headache. Um, I tried running it down through, and unfortunately the impact's not strong enough when you have, you know, three extensions on it. So I've kind of been hitting it, uh, they're 17 millimeters. Wherever they are right here, these guys, 17s. And I've been hitting it from this side. And how I've been getting it was I'll lay over here. And you can just see through that little crack right there, depending on which way you're looking. But you can just see the hole up there, not that one, that one there. You can just see it. And I'm spinning the motor over to get the next one but you guys can't see it from there but i can i believe that's the next one right there so if you guys will see um right up in there can it's it's very faint you can barely see it not a fan of the g56s but the new style clutch i was wondering why it came with bolts must not have done enough 05 pluses or any of the 05 pluses that I've done. They uh, already had the swap, but apparently any of the G56 trucks, which I've done G56s before actually, but must be, I've never done one with a factory flywheel. So this one actually comes with bolts and that's how that is. So... I wasn't prepared for this. This has cost me probably about an hour and a half of time trying to figure out the best way to get this. I'll know for next time, but it's definitely not fun. Um, definitely want to take out the wheel well. A lot of, somebody's been off-roading this bad boy. All this stuff comes out. Look at that. This is why these Dodges rot out. Look at all that. This is a two-wheel drive truck, too. I'm kind of surprised. Look at all that. I'm going to have to clean all that up. But 
yeah, you get the point. So if you guys need any of this, basically what I'm using 17 with this guy here and just put an impact in there. You can bring it out further if you want. There's really no need, but make sure you hit these bolts straight. You do not want to strip these bolts. If you do, you are pretty screwed. So I got it down and talk about a really stupid design. I mean, it is a Dodge, Ugh. but I'd expect something like this from Ford. So now I got to get that off where it's like, you could have just put the bolts from factory. What was the necessary, you know, this is, this is a lot of extra work. So generally, I quote the four-wheel drives out at a certain cost. I quote the two-wheel drives at a certain cost. I guess I'm going to have to start adding that hour for anything with a G56. If it's if it's going to come in with this factory-style flywheel or pressure plate or any, like, factory this, I am uh, I'm going to have to add that hour. But I'm going to eat the cost on this one for the future because, like, I'm going to have to, I'll have to get undo all this stuff and just keep that in mind. So, not a big deal. Um, I think they're 18 mil bolts. I'm going to get that, whatever you want to call it, taken off. The flex plate, and then we'll start throwing the new stuff. Alright, so this is where I'm going to end it on this. I'm going to do another part because I feel like the video is probably getting too long. You guys seem to like the 12 to 15 minute videos. So, the flywheel is in. The rear main is in. We got that right here and everything's torqued blue loctite all that we got jack stand and whatnot i'll throw that back together tomorrow today's saturday tomorrow barbie sunday so i'm gonna get that done i'm gonna leave the tools here take the truck back that way when i come back tomorrow i can just bring the bike because i really try not to drive this thing as much as possible so a couple of updates um I know I made a post about it, but mobile stuff is going to be come to an end as it does every single year. We're going to be stopping the mobile work around September ish. And eventually I do need to get a shop box. So all this stuff's going to go in a box. And then that way, if I come to do mobile for anybody, I would like to get an enclosed trailer for next year for any of the mobile stuff and put Bertha kind of on the back burner. Uh, we are sourcing out a transmission as of now and some injectors. So we're just going to throw in a remand, um, trans so that means this trans will be gone so we're going to be doing that and i was looking for a used one but found it i think we've got a, a remand for a decent price and then some injectors and whatnot but other than that bertha has been great but we're going to put bertha on the back burner because we do have someone that is going to be doing the rockers you can see so we're going to be getting those fixed nice and pretty because i don't do body work as you guys know but that's your update for everything if you guys uh i got a comment about a diesel mechanic if you Send me a message, uh, steve at cpstevemiller.com. I'll give you a call. Uh, send me an email. But if you guys need any shop stuff, let me know. If you need any <clears throat> mobile stuff, feel free to send me a message. But in the meantime, everything is, uh, you know, we'll still be doing mobile and whatnot. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.